the other version, if there's any changes. And then from there, the process starts with the land use ordinance and with the zoning changes. And that process may be, what do you think, Len, two years from now? A year. This isn't a done deal. But it's important, especially tonight with Trip Hammer Road, you find out what the concerns are. You find out what Mr. Young is willing to exchange. You find out what the concerns are. You find out what the history is. You find out that Cuga Orchard is an allowable use that's been approved. But maybe the other side stays the same. Maybe it doesn't. That's a conversation to have once the planning board works out, massages all these questions into their final version, then it goes to the town board to be massaged for their final version, and then it gets approved, and then we work on another process. This last one took almost seven years. The over-under, in my, in my game, is two years from now before anything changes. So it's not all of a sudden gets slammed through. Nothing gets slammed through with, with government, trust me, I'm in the private sector, nothing gets slammed through, my God. But there have been some awful good comments here about how we communicate to you. Now part of it is the website and the tweaking, and Joe Wetmore brought up, brought up some good points, which I listened to, and all those things, as all the rest of you have brought up some good points, and you massage that, but we have to have this input. And sometimes people don't realize what's going on until it's 300 feet away from them, and then we have the OMG moments. Hopefully it doesn't go into a WT, you know what moment. You know, how that happened. Even though we've had nauseam, publish these things, publish these things, publish these things, 13 meetings to go through this painstaking as we went through it twice. So the process, snails move faster. So as this goes through, this is encouraging that you get out here. And if I have to poke people on Facebook to say, guess what, things will happen, and they have to panic, good. I got a result. I don't know what you want unless you communicate. And you've done so, and I thank you for that. So there is nothing going to happen tonight as far as changes go. This is, once again, they're going to massage us some more. They may pass it at their next meeting. They may not. That's going to be whatever their comfort zone is. But when you work with different boards, you have to respect their input. This was optional. This didn't have to be done at all. We do not have the planning board have one input in what's far, we can slip right ahead. But out of respect for the process, we let them go through it painstakingly. That's okay. They gotta deal with it at the end of the day. So having said that, please keep in mind, this is still a very long process to go through. And every one of you has sent comments to me. I have looked at them respectfully, because I have no skin in this game. If you're concerned about this, I look at that very seriously. Well, you look at that, I look at that very seriously. Well, I also look at, look at the whole picture of where the town's going, because it is a guide. And maybe some of these ideas tonight, maybe they're 10 years away from now. At least we had this first conversation. So thank you. There was a couple. Is that one question? I just have a quick question. Could you explain <coughs> what, just what the process is from, on how a piece of property is changed? If something is something, I think if something's residential, if, if there's a piece of property that exists in town that is one thing and then it's changing to something else, could you just explain for all of us what that process is? I thought it was done, I guess. Yeah, um. No, because when you're saying that there's in, you know, there'll be other places for input, and we're here now. Now we know. We're, we need to know where to come with our input. What's the next step? And if, and if the comprehensive plan is not going to change anything, the, then, how, then how do things change? Like what's from, to go from, from something to something else? It, 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 it'll come up when we do when we work on the land use ordinance and, and the zoning maps. But does the then property we, owner begin that process? Does the town begin that process? Like how, like how does the bill become law? Like how does how does something change from one thing to the next? I'm pointing the guy. Because people don't, well, don't know that. Really there's right. dozens upon dozens of different ways that that can be done, and each community does it differently. Landowners have the right to petition to change their zoning. Landowners have the right to petition to change zoning in an area. And municipalities have the right to initiate changes in zoning on their own initiative. 
it would be implemented by an ordinance or by a local law. And the state law prescribes certain minimum requirements for adopting either of those pieces of legislation. Among them are uh, public notice periods and public hearings. Um, as ordinances have more archaic and older rules. They have uh, certain types of uh, petitioning rights to require super majorities. Both ordinances and local laws would require environmental reviews, which may or may not also trigger public hearings that would be separate and apart from the change in law themselves. Uh, they would also trigger General Municipal Law 239 L&M reviews where the county might like or dislike something and require a supermajority to adopt. But in either event, uh, changing zoning is an act of, at least in Lansing, the town board. In villages it would be trustees, cities, or different counties don't have zoning yet. Um, and so it, it really, what is the process? It, it varies substantially depending on the nature of what's being changed. If it's one project that is going to be its own zone as a planned development area, it might be very intensive and very localized over a period of a, a year. If it's an entire zoning ordinance that's being changed and updated, usually that's at least a one to three year process. Um, theoretically, is it possible that you could do it uh, uh, in a week? Yes. It's theoretically possible to do it in a week. I've never seen it done. Um, and you could actually do it in a week and not have it required to be provided under the public officer's law, open meetings law as a document for review by the public out front, believe it or not. That's the ruling of the Committee on Open Government. So don't blame me for that. That's New York State. So realistically, a major zoning change would be a process that would occur over a period of months. And there would be public notices published, posted, as well as environmental notices, notices that go out to all sorts of agencies, um, the county, neighboring communities, uh, that would include counties, towns. There'd be, it'd be pretty widely known that that was occurring. Um, but yes, it is possible that a particular resident at a particular location in a particular time would not pick up on it. So you just sort of got to stay plugged in. Which is exactly going to be my question. Should we stop by, like, do we need to read the legals every day? Do we need to yes. come every day? Yes. So we can <laughs> Well, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the roadmap that you're looking at is that the town board will ultimately um, approve a version of the comprehensive plan and will be adopted. And after that happens, then I think that you're looking at the planning board being involved with the town board to look at changing the zoning to conform to that future vision. And that's where you'll want to have a lot of input as a citizen, and it's where you might be that one person who has no idea, like me, that there's anything going on. So you will definitely want to be um, attending planning board meetings and town board meetings. At least that's my thing. Right. Or reading the agenda. <laughs> but, but we, we've heard from the public now that you want to be notified. I believe we don't legally have, the town doesn't legally have to notify the adjacent property owners. But we've heard from the public saying you would like to be notified. So if the zoning change does come up, as a board member, I would recommend that we just go ahead and say, everyone within 200 feet, we're going to send you a notice of the consideration, the potential of it and that it's being changed. Now, that's what I would recommend, and I think the board here would probably go along with that. So I, I, I can't promise you that, but it's something that we would consider doing. Actually, now for subdivisions, uh, the requirement is to notify everyone within 600 feet. So I've got no issue with uh, expanding that to potential zoning changes. I think my suggestion would be if you're really interested in getting better communication, then you talk to the town supervisor and see how you can be part of the solution to that. 592-6542. I have my cell phone. Call me anytime, please. I gotta go back first. 
Okay. Sorry. I'm going to bring this back to how the comprehensive plan fits the zoning changes because it doesn't. The, the, the idea that it doesn't change anything is untrue. What the comprehensive plan does is it limits the town officials in what kind of zoning changes they can make. If you zone something um, mixed density commercial, you can't, as a town board, decide to rezone it into a residential thing. You have to be consistent with the comprehensive plan's description. And so this is the start of zoning changes. It doesn't change anything per se, but it limits what the board can do in terms of changes. And so it is really important what the designations on this map do, because if the town board wants to do any rezoning on that property, it has to be consistent with what this uh, comprehensive plan does. That's why we included a lot of stuff that we did include. And I will reiterate that passing the comprehensive plan doesn't change the law at this point. It doesn't it change the zoning, but it changes what parameters the town board can do in terms no, of the zoning. No, I understand it. I understand it. So. Um, hmm? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, oh, right. Well, I was just going to let people that don't realize that, they, they say that the website is hard to navigate, but if you go to the Town of Lansing website, there's a one thing there that's public notices. All you do is click on that, and it tells you of the public notices, public hearings, and what have you. It's very easy to get to. Um, it's not like going through a million documents to get there. But if you check that a couple of times a week, you will see um, what what's going on as far as meetings and notices and stuff. Except so. this meeting wasn't on that uh, website, and the cargo hearing was not on that uh, page. So no, it doesn't tell you what meetings are coming yes, out. But it was. Yes, it is. I checked it a week ago. It wasn't there. Not yeah. under public notices. It you is. can look and you can look and find it in other parts of the town website, but under public notices, it was not there. It is posted. Actually, it was either posted last Monday or um, Friday. I don't think it's posted. There's a difference here. Of semantics. You're, you're thinking of a, of a published public notice, like yeah, a public just, hearing company, yeah, yeah, a legal this, notice. This it's it's on here as a scheduled meeting. Right, right. I published it in the Ethica Journal two weeks ahead of time. Yes. And I actually started posting everything for this meeting once it was planned, like the agenda, the documents, all that, the following it, it's on. It's on the planning board section, but if you go to the town board website where it says public notices, it, you need to pull it up here. again. You yes. know about it two months ago and you put it a week in advance? All right, we're done there. Um, I think there's a couple things. There's, there's, there's a couple major items that we can talk about as a board tonight of, of, of uh, number one being Bell Station and number two being the, the Trip Hammer Road property, which seems to get the most. I will start out by saying the very first comment tonight um, that the public notice was not given uh, and documents weren't available 10 days prior to this meeting. I did some checking and we did some checking with uh, where the notices were and what date they were on and where they were available and we feel confident that, that things were there. It was a little discombobulated because I think Mike was out of the office and things weren't going back and forth. But on, on the, the other issue is, is that the notices that were there, for example, with the town clerk, um, I think less than five people looked at them. So it's not like I mean, is there, any, is there anybody here that felt like they didn't get a copy or didn't see what they wanted to see when they walked in? I know there's one or two of us, but generally it was people were satisfied that, that, that the documents were there and they were there. So I mean, feel confident that we had the public meeting and it was a legal public meeting <laughs> and it was done lately. But the, the second big issue is um, that we talked about tonight was Bell Station. And I think as a board, we discussed Bell Station back and forth. And um, 
Does anybody want to take the reins on this at all and explain their reasoning or thought process on Bell Station? Nobody wants <laughs> I, uh, Come on. <laughs> I, I, I will say that nothing changed. It stayed the way it was right. in terms of Lake as an agriculture. Like it is an existing the current zoning map. The current right. zoning map uh, it is where it was. To be honest, I was not at that meeting when you did talk about their maps. So whatever went on there, if somebody can recall that, that would be good. One of the things I recall that we did discuss was the upper area that is an agricultural use right now should really remain an agricultural use. Uh, the lower area of taxing taxation consideration <coughs> aside, um, first of all, is on the it is is actually an area that uh, could be quite a draw for recreation. It's the location of some of the largest limestone caves, the largest accessible limestone caves on the eastern shore of Cuba Lake, and recreational use would not be incompatible with that. The question is, and it's allowed in that the zone that and it, it is allowed that's, in that's the zone key. That's, that, that's, that's the key, key here. here. Recreation is allowed in the zone that is designated for now, and it remains so. The, uh, so the fact that uh, the entity that currently owns the land uh, doesn't intend to use it for any of their own uses, and to be perfectly frank, in its current state, it still brings in uh, a good tax bite from the, the current owner. But I think everybody, you know, we've discussed this often enough, but everybody in the board recognizes that that is a eventually if not if not now then in a few years simply because of the of, of the of the physical features is a terrific re, uh, recreational uh, spot so we're, 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 we don't disagree with that a bit the problem is we'd rather get paid taxes for four thousand dollars an acre than five hundred dollars an acre but why was it changed? It was not changed. It was never it was not changed. changed. It was suggested in the in the initial comp plan to change it over to a recreational use only. Recreation is allowed in the existing zone where it sits right now, and it's still allowed. It's permitted. It's permitted. But, it's permitted in that zone. So if this land, but there's a it, land use map now that has it designated as lake low density, not recreation. We don't have a designation for recreation. Recreation, well, however, is, just, listen, uh, recreation I is allowed in that district. Can I try to clarify? Use recreation. The, the current land use map, the one that we're dealing with now, this part of the local law, calls that L1, the low density. Low density residential is allowed, but also recreational is allowed. It's a moot point to change it until that land changes ownership. It's allowed by a special permit. Correct. Only a special permit. Can I just That's say right. that, as, as someone also late to the game, I would just like to say that I'm very disappointed that the rationale for these changes are now being discussed after I and my neighbors have been asking for months to explain these, that the public hearing is closed, and now we're getting to, you know, bits and pieces of the rationale. It's kind of backwards. In my opinion. No, we discussed it in our, our 13 meetings. There's no public open, record of those. But there were open no meetings that, that the public could have sat in on no our public discussion record, no and, and, that ever and entered, entered their opinions. Can you open. acknowledge that it is disappointing to the residents of this town what has occurred and occurring right now? It's very disappointing. I disagree. I, I just don't know how much you expect the town at this level or to board level to well, like the, the, put out, I mean, yeah. do we well, have there was to do an informational word, session word, in word August. I'm not getting it. No, no, the rationale, so I've been asking for, for weeks and my neighbors have been asking for months. What occurred from 2015, uh, the committee, the citizen committee that was part of the comprehensive plan, all of those documents were submitted. And then the planning board has their documents. 
And we've been wondering, how did those changes occur? Can you explain it? Well, we haven't got answers for weeks. And now I'm disappointed that some bits and pieces of information are coming out after the public hearing. Like, a lot of this tension could have been avoided if there was dialogue right from the beginning. That's all. It's just a comment. I don't need a response. Well, certainly, if, if we had those questions along the way, we would have had an opportunity to answer those questions. We've had them for weeks on my part. Sure, but we worked on that. We worked on that plan for months before that. It was submitted on July 10th. Right. I'm just asking the changes between the two plans. That no, I explain. understand what you're asking. I think very specifically in in, in um, reference to Bell Station. So the question really is the. Comprehensive Plan Committee decided on the future land use map to designate it as recreational. So the question really is, why is that changing from their version of the comp plan to our version of the comp plan as the, the L1 and what is it, the RA up above? And so you heard some of the rationale for it right now. I'm sorry, that's that's coming later. We have this question back in um, June or July that we would have answered it in August or September. But part of that answer is that we continue to allow the use that the public would like it, like to see it used for in the future, and we also preserve the kind of tax revenue stream that we have from that. That's right now at a two million dollar, almost two million dollar assessed property. So I don't really see a problem. Lynn, do we have a definition for recreation in our zoning? There is a definite for a zoning. We have a zoning recreate. Zoning is recreational. No. no. So we there's don't no have... recreational zoning classification. Right. There are definitions of land so uses. So you, you can't put it on the map without a definition. Correct. You need a definition to place that, that type on the map. It's on the map. You just distributed. It's right here. It's pink. It says recreation. Right. But I'm saying there's not, there's not a definition for that. Yeah, that's the problem. Well, that, that's, a, that's a proposed future that I think they came out of, future land use map that came out of the previous meetings. And I think that's what that, that maybe it never should have got out there. Well, um, it's there. That's the point that I tried to make. It doesn't, well, the map that we're referring to there is the one that's in the comprehensive plan that's proposed future land use. The one that we're dealing with now with the current ordinance is the zoning map that is that is in existence at this point. That was the point that I was trying to make earlier. I think back at the time of the resolution, it was what, 2003, the, the ownership of that land was being kicked around. And, and some of these alternatives came up. Number one, I, uh, the DEC had to buy that from them. Number two, the DEC would agree to pay the town of Lansing a pilot program payment to move taxes to the town of Lansing. And um, all those things at this point, looking back, it seemed like, wow, that's putting a lot of uh, ducks in a row to make this thing happen. So I, maybe it would happen, but, but the options are still there. If this land goes for sale, I certainly think there's not anybody in this room that wouldn't, wouldn't say, geez, let's, let's, let's take a stab at this. Um, but as it sits now, nothing changes. The, the land is there. Use for recreation. Um, but you want to leave the option for housing open. Say you know what? But you want to leave the option for making it housing for rich people open. Um, if the owner chooses not to sell it, and you know you can't come to the conclusion, can, could could we afford it as a town to wipe it off? Do we want to wipe it off the tax rolls and? Um, and, and change its recreation and put it on back on the tax roll as a, as, a, as, a, as a deficit instead of a bonus. I, I don't know. Maybe somebody in the, the town in the future would like to do that. But I will say that on Cuba Lake, if you drive around the lake, the town of Lansing probably, it does, has the largest and the best park on the lake already. Um, we are very fortunate. To, to say that we're lacking um, access to the lake is, is a misnomer. No one's saying it's being lacked. I heard it tonight. I heard it tonight. And I've seen it in Easton. So, you know, I, I'm not against it. I think it would be wonderful. But, you know, we, we 
gotta we gotta face the facts too. It's, it's, it's still the town not the town. It's still, still not the town. town. That, that, that's the, the point. point. It's still privately owned. Yeah. 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 It's exactly right. It's it's owned by a corporation. They pay taxes on it. They own it, and they should be able to do what they want with it within the confines of legality. So it's you're trying to take something away from someone in a sense without some sort of compensation. In 2005, if that ever came to fruition and you get the DEC to pay as a pilot program and everybody agreed, that would have been great. I, I don't maybe you could have it again. I don't know. I don't want to get in the middle of it too much more, but usually I think what do you have to come up with? What's the assessed value? 1.25 million? It's, it's, the assessment is uh, two, two mil, roughly $2 million. I say $2 million. So if that, and the question was, I believe back then, that Andy Zapp for the land trust uh, had an idea that maybe if the company was in motion uh, that potentially the land trust wanted to get, uh, I guess, first shot, whatever you want to call it, at buying it. I farmed the thing for a year, um, and it's decent farmland. But to get back to the point, usually since the state moves so slowly, and they just don't have a spare $2 million when you ask for it, or more, the land trust is the go-between who has money in the bank or from donors, and they make an agreement with the landowner to buy the property. And then they set the deal, obviously, with the state knowing that, and then the state can then a, uh, get bills passed to finance said piece of property. And I do believe for a state park, for the DEC, it has to have a minimum of 500 acres and I think currently there are a few acres short. So the past documents that the town made, which I have no brain to remember, but was somewhere between that, that if the town would support it, if the state bought it, but we'd like a pilot to make up for the tax uh, loss to the town. So that was our thought, thought process. In the meantime, it stays as it is and can be used for lots of different uses at this point. Um, the other big one that we heard a lot tonight was the, the triangle of Trebama Road and Hillcrest. And I think Larry had a point that something, there was an issue with form-based code approach there. Um, yes, okay. Why, what we talked about. Well, originally, uh, the planning board thought that that would be an ideal place for neighborhood building tools that are allowable in a form-based code. But the adoption of a form-based code takes a lot longer than we would have to resolve this situation. However, without changing our ordinance a great deal, we are allowed to use form-based zoning tools. And the whole idea uh, of making that a form-based area would be in what the uh, what the planning people that do the that educate us uh, call neighborhood building, and the whole idea is at the state level we're being encouraged to reduce vehicular traffic and make neighborhoods that can have services within walking distance without jumping in the car and driving six miles or ten miles or fifteen miles, and because. A lot of that neighborhood was already built out. We thought, well, maybe the form-based application in this area, with a goal of neighborhood building, would be a potential use. So we had it put in like that. The pro and th this was also suggested by the uh, Cornell Design Group that did uh, how long? About six months consulting for us. Yes, a semester. Uh, and that was that was one of their recommendations. The problem is that because of uh, the mechanics of changing to a form-based code, rather than allowing us, rather than being able to use form-based tools within our existing code, which we could do without making that huge change, um, 
in the process, it got called commercial mixed use. I would have preferred residential mixed use. I mean, what would be wrong with having a, a person that had a house there with their office in it, or something like that? I, I don't think the, the that's too much to hope for because I don't think the the John Moore wasn't advocating intensive, intensive, high traffic commercial use. We weren't saying bring in a McDonald's. We're saying that would be suitable for a compatible commercial slash residential use. We believe Michael Leans, as an example, is compatible with the neighborhood now. It's a small office building, a coffee shop, something of that nature. Medical, something. medical, something like that. Light traffic that would be compatible with the neighborhood would be would be suitable for that location. One of the other things that we consider when we're dealing with an area like that is we we got to know the area. You, you got to understand that on that triangle, topsoil and overburden to shale or rock varies from two to 10 feet. So it's not really a terrific place to build uh, much of anything, and it's not a terrific place to absorb any uh, flow from uphill. So all those things have to be considered. We can handle a lot of those now that we are an MS4 and have a stormwater law of our own, which we couldn't do but eight years ago, even five years ago. That's basically what we were looking at. And, you know, unfortunately, it got turned right over just to commercial. And yeah. I don't think there was any explanation about There was never any for. consideration on our parts of making that solely commercial. It's just one of those unfortunate things that happened. And maybe it was a good thing because it makes it more clear tonight. And I'm sorry if you, you don't like getting the responses outside of the public hearing, but while the public hearing is going on, the planning board isn't supposed to make any responses. We're doing this after we close the hearing to try to get some answers in your hands. Right. I'm a firm believer in transition zones anyway between anything majorly commercial and a residential zone, whether it be it R1 or R2. I think there's got to be a, a, a low impact in between, in this area at the base of Hillcrest and Trippinger Road, uh, I, I think we talked about a low impact business, a, a lawyer, a dentist, uh, a medical use. It, I mean, they're open during the week, they're closed during the weekend. Um, you know, they, they, they don't really impact the neighborhood all that much. And, and I think like we heard Mr. Young speak too, it's not really a great place to want to build a $500,000 house either because it is noisy. So that was our thought process there. Yeah. Thank, thank you very much for sharing it. And I wish I, I wish for your sake that I had known sooner so that I could have come sooner and you wouldn't have had to do Well, may, maybe in the future. I mean, I guess if we had an agenda where we published what we were going to, what are you going to talk about that night? Because it was in one of those 13 or 14 meetings. Yeah. And, and we, we didn't just skip from twice. spot to we spot during twice. those meetings. We started at the beginning and we did X number of sections and said we're going to do these sections next week and on like that. Um, listen, we love company. We have this meeting twice, we have our meetings twice a month. Y'all come on down. We don't do refreshments, but I can guarantee a good floor show. <laughs> one, of the other, started five, one, one of the other issues that we, we heard a lot tonight was trails. And um, the, the trail committee, the existing trail committee, disbanded last year. I don't know if there were some issues there, but um, we do have uh, committee member Deborah Trumbull is working um, with the Lansing Rec Department and we as a board, any, any subdivision or any major, major uh, land use, we, we are involving the trails or we're asking for trails and we're putting them in there. We're not ignoring it. Um, do we need a trails committee? Maybe, I don't know. I, that, I don't think that's this board's call. Maybe, maybe at, the, at the town board level, if something wanted to develop there again. But, but we are including them. If you care to look at the resolution uh, that we passed on um, 
Kiwi Orchards, which, by the way, that's about their fourth change. Yeah, well, that's We've been that's working with them since uh, 2015, at least. Uh, in the resolution, there's a specific mention of providing right-of-way to uh, the, rail the old railroad track at the back of their property to the land next to it for use as a trail. Point they don't have to develop it, but they have to like, give us a right-of-way to it. In addition, I mean, the um, village sowers also provided trails and, and built them around the village sowers up in, in uh, I'm Oh, and uh, one of the other things that, that came up uh, of last week, the engineer that is the consultant on that project agreed to take the recommendation for air sourced heat pumps back to the developer. And uh, coming across the street, every we have trails over there now, and it, it is slated for to be developed. Who knows how long, many decades that will take? Um, but the trail will be there. I mean, it's they will build around the trail. Okay. Yeah, but the, that doesn't address the concern that you know you're going to have trails that are developed around, and you will have road crossings. Right, yeah. and, and right. I think ultimately the people who are, are concerned with that and want to see a portion of the trail system in a place that's not going to be developed will have to be looking for another area besides the one right across the street that is going to be developed. However, other other towns uh, have a similar problem. For instance, up in Pittsburgh, but where they have a trail system that does uh, across public highways when they have an event, they have volunteers as flagmen at the crossings. That, that's really hard. <laughs> I know it's hard, but, but you, you know, y'all, it's hard to go to every game that your kid has. It's hard, to, you know, there's, there's got to be an investment on both sides. The town may not be able to provide crossing guards, but uh, uh, the, the, way that, the way that Lansing is, Lansing has always been a town that your neighborhood is uh, the same people that your kids are on the same teams with. And believe me, the people whose kids are on your teams will volunteer for stuff like that. They do. They do. Just. I, I can speak from experience. <laughs> so, so, I mean, it's just trails are here. They're, they're, we haven't forgotten. They're going to get better. They're, they're, more of them. I think, I think in the future you will see more of a dedication to to the trails or, or maybe a, a future committee or something but but we haven't forgotten here we're, we're still trying to include them in every applicable land use that we can within this corridor i mean obviously something's happening out in the middle of no place it's not going to have a trail that really is going to lend itself to any kind of interconnected trail so Different transportation situation, uh, not trails, but buses and public transportation. We have asked for that, and it's been rather sad the answers back from uh, TCAT. Oh, we really don't want a bus stop because it interrupts our schedule. And so, for Village Solars, they have land set aside for a bus stop, and uh, we tried on Cuba. We tried on Cuba, and uh, there's land set aside, but it, it seems to uh, it's a very interesting thing. So where to the people at Cornell and the county that control TCAT? <laughs> Help us out. I'll take a question. Go ahead. Uh, so hi, uh, my name is Peter Kendall. Uh, I'm with partners. We're from the Cornell team. We're working on the bus driving. Uh, Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I used it for 30 years. We need more of it. You're the chairman. You're the chairman. Uh, so I uh, emailed uh, Angel, the town supervisor, uh, and he directed me to uh, Michael Wong, who I hopefully see at this meeting. Um, but we're working at a different team than the other team that did uh, transportation issues, which I believe was two years ago, first semester. We're looking at um, busing issues. TGAT has acknowledged that there is, we're working with TGAT. So TGAT has acknowledged that there's an issue of busing in Lansing. Uh, there's you know, only a few routes that run, not that often. Um, you know, if you would mind, if people would like to talk to me about that, I'd love to, you know, share email addresses, I can get you in contact with some of the people above me, but um, we're looking to redesign the route system in Lansing. Um, 
parts of my, this is just a subsection with a grabbing team. There's a team that is, we do bus shelters in Ithaca. There's a team that is doing signage. And uh, last semester, the team worked on ID cards um, for the buses that had these collective materials so that they could be seen late at night so I understand that there are not bus stops here so that people have to flag down the buses. Um, and there's some concerns over that. So those are the type of things that we're exploring. Um, we love some public input. We love to hear from the board. Um, and we're looking to you know, get this going efficiently as possible. Uh, you know, we're not the only three on my team. There's, you know, I think 20 to 30 people on my team. I am an urban planning major. Uh, my two friends here are systems engineers, planners, uh, our system engineers. Uh, to so there's a variety of us working together, um, and uh, that's, that's all I have. I wasn't going to say anything, I'm just going to put you at the end. But it's not the trick. Well, this is good. You, you need to contact this guy right here. Yeah. Here he does. Get some info off. And we better have an app for that. Thank you. I was going to say, the biggest issue I think that we see is frequency. You know, just the routes itself. How often do they get here? You know, that's, that's I think, the biggest issue is how often frequency. But that gives you an example of the kind of uh, help we've gotten from the planning department at Cornell over the past few years. Sorry. Really terrific help. Okay, is anybody else here? Did we get a major, or do we want to sit down at the, at the beginning of the next meeting and, and cash these out? Or? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. One more time before we do a resolution. Yeah. Yes, good idea. Okay. Yeah, then we get all the high points of things we've heard most comments on tonight. And as we said, everything that we've collected is going to be transferred yeah. just as we got it to the town board. So you mean next Monday, what time? Uh, next Monday. Well, the next meeting. You mean um, the next meeting when? I, I, I would like to do a special meeting. Go ahead, I want to be out of town. Yeah, we're going to cheer it. I'm, I'm out of town as well. Next Monday. I guess Dean will be here to be Next Wednesday. Wednesday. I don't get back in town until Thursday. When are you back? I can do Wednesday. Okay, next Thursday. Wednesday. You'll be back Wednesday? I'll be back Monday night. Later. Okay. So, how are you going to be out of you're talking about a week from this Wednesday? We have a special meeting scheduled. We have a week from Thursday? You have okay. a board meeting. Wait a minute. Guys, before this gets too out of hand, remember, our next meeting is on the 13th. I know. Let's do it then. Well, we, we'll do it before then. But I. I, I, no. I might suggest that maybe if people have any specific things they want to see changed in the language that maybe we start to compile things so we have a list okay. already before the meeting that you guys can then say yes or no, yes or no. I don't think anybody's going to be terribly disappointed if we take the time to do our due diligence and do it at the, the next regular meeting. Okay, that's fine. That's what I wanted was your... But you can't get ahead of time so that you don't start from scratch. Well, go ahead and have it while I'm not here. I don't care. <laughs> Art, Ed, what'd you say? I, know, I think it's a good idea to communicate back and forth ahead of time so at least you're familiar so that when you do have your meeting in two weeks, you can have a have a, a good discussion, maybe move forward or not, depending on what your comfort level is. At least you got time to look at those questions and consider them. Do you have a good compilation of the questions, Sue? And, and we can get them out to the members? Yeah, and actually, um, the ones that have come in so far were sent out and right. emailed back here, right. and you guys should have them there. Yeah. Yep. Yep. yep, you're going to add some new ones on so There was a, I think there was two or three new ones that I added um, on your, right in front of you guys before you arrived. Yep, yep. plus the one from today. Yep. And then, yeah, and whatever two, 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 was handed in today, today and whatever, whoever spoke on, I'll do my best oh. to. To put it anywhere. So are, are we going to respond by topic or by individual? Well, a lot of the players cover the same topic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So that's why I covered my topics tonight on some of the big ones. So, are Maybe we, we going to answer them? Do we already have anything on the agenda for the next meeting? Yeah, we do. 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 Yeah,
Oh, yes. Everything is possible yeah. tonight. Quite a few things. We have a few. Cargill. We have Cargill. 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 Cornerstone. Cornerstone, Cargill, and Crown Castle. South yeah. Tower. Uh, oh, they're back. Yeah, finally. <laughs> they're back. Kind of like Johnny. Do you store water for Cargill? Yeah. We're close. We're getting the final versions of it now. It's fine. It's good. Okay, I think the only other thing we might have an update. I'm just going to say those are the items that are going to be on the next meeting. Is really the Cargill final uh, site plan approval, the uh, Crown Castle uh, microwave tower that went in for 239 review. Uh, should have that back soon. Um, they're also looking for a variance for the uh, fall zone. As you know, they're reducing the tower down to 95 feet uh, with a 50 foot break point. Crown Castle's wanted an approval before they could get engineering. Well, they don't want to have to do the engineering. They want the site plan approval before they provide the engineering. I'm not bringing the approval. That's, 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 that's what we're going to afford, of course. Put a condition. You put a condition on it. That it has to meet the specs, and, and the engineer has to review it and approve it. I think that's sufficient. They're going to have to do it at some point. Yeah. We're going to get a permit. Yeah, it's going to give them a permit. Yeah. That's right. And then we have one other uh, cell tower, too, that was a modification to the one up on uh, Kind of an old, but they haven't submitted the stuff yet. Not just, okay. Well, that's the nice one. Thanks, Mike. 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 Thank you all for coming.